Hey guys, I'm going to do something today that you're told never to do, and that's take apart a magnetic chuck. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Today, I'm going to take apart this magnetic chuck, and I need to do it because it's not, well, quite working correctly. I picked it up off of eBay for about $80, so how can I complain, especially since it is a sign chuck. It is 6 inch by 12 inch. Problem with it is, you can see the handle has a lot of movement in it. And what I'm guessing is the bearing is worn out. The other challenge is, is the magnet doesn't have a total grip all the way around it. So right now, the magnet, that's eh, kind of on. But we're going to bring this over, lock it. And you can see, like in this corner here, it's a little weak. It's a little stronger there, a little stronger there. What the problem can be is simply that the magnet isn't shifting correctly. I hope that's all the problem is. Now, a lot of you don't know how one of these work, to be honest. It's kind of a black magic. I'm not exactly sure myself, but I will do my best to explain it. We have this top plate here, and it's segregated by different metal plates. And what that allows it to do is allow the magnetic flux from the magnet to come up and reach and grab your metal. The magnet down below looks kind of similar to this. It's a ceramic magnet, insulator, ceramic magnet, and an insulator. Now, the magnets are actually, the poles are reversed on them. So if it's negative on this side, the next one to it is positive on that side. So it kind of goes back and forth, very similar to when you connect batteries together. Well, with that sandwich of magnets below, and with a sandwich of conductive material on top, and inconductive material, I hope I'm using the correct terms, what happens is the magnet actually shifts from one side to the other. And when it's shifted off, there's no magnetic flux allowed to come through because it's canceled out because of the reverse magnets. But when it's in alignment, the, magnet, the magnetic flux is allowed to come up and grab your metal. So that's how they work. You know, originally I thought what would happen is the magnet pulls away, but no, it actually just shifts over. This magnetic chuck is kind of unique because it has medium and smaller magnetic plates together. So what that means is these plates are a lot closer together, but you have a, a medium, a small, a medium, and a small. And what that allows it to do is the magnet can grab different thicknesses of materials. There's also ones that have larger magnets, and those are designed to grab thicker materials. What do I mean by that? Why doesn't it just grab it equally? Well, you have to think of it this way, is the magnetic flux when it comes up is kind of a loop. The wider these are apart, the higher the magnetic loop can come up. Ones with really close plates together is that they're really great for thin materials because the loop just kind of comes up, grabs it, and pulls it down. Think of it, like I say, as a thread to come up and pull the material down. Well, a medium can come up and grab another one. These are not great for really thick material, but if the material is large enough, it's not relevant. But if I was using one with the plates were really wide on it, and I wanted to put thin material on it, it's not going to grab it very well because the main egg flux is going to come up above where the material is and pull down to it, and it's not going to be as effective. So I'm hoping I'm making sense of that. Now, I have to be honest, I'm trying to explain it in a way that I understood it, and I hope I'm correct on that. Conceptually, I think I'm correct. If I'm not, please leave a comment down below and help us all out. Like I say, it's kind of a, a black art. Now, I want to take this apart, which I've been told never to do, and the reason you don't want to do it is those magnets in there are very powerful, and if you were to get your finger in there, well, let's just say, it could be quite painful. But besides that, let's take it apart. Now, I'm hoping that the bearing surface in here is just a bronze bushing of some sort. Before I took this apart, I actually measured it, how far I'll whack it is. It's way out. Now, 
at this point, it really doesn't matter because what we're going to try to do is get that rail line later. And we can actually grind that flat. We're just going to take it off at the hinges. One of the things I like about this particular chuck, instead of this bar here sitting on this surface, it actually has an extra foot. The advantage to the foot is I've got a couple other plates that this bar just sitting on here over time and not stored correctly actually caused a little bit of pitting. So just to let you know I like the idea of the foot. So there we go. We've got a little bit of rust in there. We've got a couple wear plates that are worn out here. Let's look at the magnet. So what's happened to this chuck, it was, it was probably used with some sort of cooling system and definitely, well, the rust got in there. So that's good news. I think we can fix this. I want to show you this part here. Actually, the diameter up here is okay. At this point, when it's in really close, see here it's not horrible, but back here is really where all the waste is. So I'm going to have to totally remake this part. It's actually a complicated piece to make, and I have to decide what my building process will be. This part here, we're going to probably completely rebuild from scratch. There's a bushing in here that we need to push out and reset a new one in there. The magnet has a lot of rust on it. Most of it looks like it's surface rust. These strips here, of course, are bad where the one had the hole in it. Luckily, there's no real signs of problems here. There's a little bit, but I think if I put down new strips, I'll actually, instead of these were pinned into place, I'll actually glue them in with epoxy. That'll work excellent. Since the whole magnet's held with that, I'm sure um, epoxy will be fine just to hold down these strips. I don't know if I'm going to go with a steel strip or if I'm going to go with the brass. That's a good question. The springs here, which i got to say, the last magnet I took apart didn't have these springs in it or a place for them. It was just a really a great tolerance fit. But one of these is broken off. So I've got to decide if I'm going to make new ones. Um, I know I'll have to at least make one new one. Do I want to make two? That's actually kind of a cool project to make these springs. We need to slide this magnet off of here and get it cleaned up. The surface here is rusted and messed up. And that's probably going to explain why the top when I measured it was not parallel to the base. So that's always good news. I hope you guys have enjoyed this last video. There's still a lot more to come. We've got some very cool milling work to do on this, some unique lathe techniques, measuring techniques. As you can see in that first video, there's a lot of stuff that has to be done to this magnetic sign chuck to get it back into shape. So I want you guys to stay tuned. If you like this video, please give me some thumbs up. Also leave some of your comments. And until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.